By the spring of 1863, Major General Ulysses S. Grant, in command of the Union Army of the Tennessee, was at a crossroads in his career. There was tremendous clamor in the northern press demanding that President Abraham Lincoln remove Grant as commander of the Western Army. Even members of the cabinet urged the president to replace Grant. But the president responded to those critical of Grant by saying, I can't spare this man. He fights. Thus, by late spring, Grant realizing that the only viable option left him was to march his army south through Louisiana from his base camps at Milliken's Bend and Young's Point and hurl his army across the mighty river somewhere below the fortress city of Vicksburg and operate against the Confederate citadel from the south and east, the area in which the Confederates would least expect him. Thus, on March the 29th, the orders were issued to begin this movement south through Louisiana, and as the soldiers slogged their way south, corduroying roads and building bridges each step of the way, the Union fleet, commanded by Rear Admiral David Dixon Porter, successfully passed by the batteries of Vicksburg in a fiery display on, on the evening of April the 16th, and by the end of the month had rendezvoused with Grant at Hard Times Landing, well south of Vicksburg. From that location, on April 30th and into May 1st, Grant would hurl his army across the mighty river and onto Mississippi soil, and the inland campaign to capture Vicksburg began. Over the next 17 days, in what is often referred to as the Blitzkrieg of the Vicksburg Campaign, Grant's forces would push deep into the interior of the state of Mississippi, meeting an overwhelming Confederate resistance in five separate actions at Port Gibson on May 1st, Raymond on May 12th. Two days later, they would capture the capital city of Jackson. Not wishing to waste combat troops in occupation of Mississippi's capital city, Grant ordered Jackson neutralized militarily. And by that I mean he freely applied the torch to machine shops and factories, cut up railroad lines and telegraph lines. Anything of military value was destroyed. With Jackson neutralized, Grant turned west toward his objective, the fortress city of Vicksburg. And between Jackson and Vicksburg, he would again encounter Confederate forces, this time at Champion Hill on May the 16th. In the largest, bloodiest, and most decisive action of the Vicksburg campaign, Grant would drive Confederate forces led by Lieutenant General John Pemberton from the field of battle in panic and confusion. The following day, along the line of the Big Black, Grant would once again overwhelm Confederate forces and drive them back into the city's defenses. Having defeated the Confederate forces in five separate actions, Grant believed that those men responsible for the defense of Vicksburg were greatly demoralized and thought that a quick show of force early on would result in a speedy capitulation of the fortress city. Thus, on May 19 and again on May the 22nd, Grant would hurl his army against the city's fortifications. Although men in blue succeeded in planting their colors atop the parapets in several different areas, they would finally be checked and hurled back with heavy loss. Grant would then decide, as he put it, to outcamp the enemy and lay siege to the city. Throughout the month of May, Grant would slowly extend his lines to the left and to the right until they completely encircled the Confederate garrison in Vicksburg. Once the line of circumvallation was established, Grant's forces then began sinking approaches toward the Confederate line. Thirteen separate approaches would be constructed throughout the month of June by Union forces, the largest and most successful of which would be along the Jackson Road and known as Logan's Approach. On June the 25th, Union sappers would detonate a mine at the end of Logan's approach directly beneath the 3rd Louisiana Redan, one of the powerful bastions guarding the Jackson Road entry point into the city of Vicksburg. Although the battle raged in fury for hours and the crater itself slowly filled with the dead and dying men in blue and gray, the Union forces would be denied entrance into the city that day. But by July 1st, Grant's forces had closed all along the line to within just a few yards of the Confederate fortifications. Confederate General John Pemberton, realizing that there would be no help from outside, knowing that his supplies and munitions and rations would soon be exhausted, and knowing that within just a few more days of digging, Union forces could detonate 13 separate mines underneath his fortifications, opened up negotiations with Grant for the surrender of the city. And on July the 4th, the 47th day of siege, the Union Army would march in and take possession of the fortress city that had eluded them for so long. By gaining Vicksburg in July of 1863, it would give the North undisputed control of the Mississippi River, divide the Southern Confederacy in two, and effectively seal the doom of Richmond.